Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board and card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Paper Pilots, and it's by Earth Links Collection, or Collection. It is a chapter one, Survivors, which means there are going to be multiple chapters in this uh, game, or add-ons of some sort. It plays two players, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I'd probably say about 11 and up. And this is a space combat dogfighting style game. You can play with one deck, like you see over there, or you can play with two. Uh, players can use that one deck and split it, or of course you can have two uh, separate decks for each player. And the game's going to give you a little paper pilot style airplane that you're going to be using to uh, to do your combat. So players are actually going to not only be rolling dice for attack and defense along with playing cards to modify those rolls and how you're choosing to try and attack and do defense as well as how you're trying to do damage and prevent that damage but also you're going to be rolling die to determine positioning because there's going to be two uh, phases. There's like this engagement style phase in which you're trying to maneuver your your ship to be in the best possible position to give you the best advantages and also then they're going to try and make sure that you do as much damage as possible now you have a certain amount of cards you can use in your deck and once you run out of those cards you are not going to have any more cards left so you have to be very careful how and when you choose to use the cards as well as adding that luck factor of how you roll the die uh, and of course whoever destroys the enemy ship is going to be the winner of the game it's a fairly simple game as to how it works with a few little complexities as to when you want to play cards how cards function as well as the there's also some additional cards that start on the side of the board for you that have a countdown timer that you can use multiple times that allow you to do some interesting combinations involving engagement and whatnot. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what you get in the game with one of these boxes and I'll give you an example of how to play and then we'll come up and uh, discuss the game together. So here's the setup for Paper Pilots and as you can see, we're playing with just one deck, but if you wanted, you could play with two and I'll explain the setup, which basically is functions very similar for whether you're playing one or two decks. You're each going to get a paper pilot plane, which are these little guys here. Eh, little guys that look like they're uh, origami style of spacecrafts. You're also going to be using a lot of die in this game. You're going to be using die for your HP, 6 and 6 for 12. You'll have an attack die and you'll have a defense die which you'll be rolling throughout the game during each of the attack phases. And then you're also going to have a die set aside for when you're going to need to roll, specifically for maneuvers and whatnot. Uh, you'll have your own deck of cards. You're going to separate from the deck of cards in here and it's going to be I think they're numbered one through something so you'll actually cut it right down the middle give one half to one player and the other half to the other player you're also going to have these maneuver cards here and they'll tell you uh, what they are basically like this is twisting loop I think this is dive and roll and you're going to set them aside for the beginning of the game. And you're also gonna put die counters or countdown timers on top of them, which will let you know when you can choose to utilize them throughout the game because you're only gonna be able to utilize them when they're open and available for use. And when they're not, you'll have to basically put these countdown die timers on them and wait until you can use them again. They're actually pretty powerful abilities. Uh, you can also choose what type of uh, fighter you're using. In this case, we just have the uh, the basic fighters and they tell you what type of weapons they have their uh, range armor speed power and boost etc etc and you'll be setting these aside uh, i'm guessing in the multiple different scenarios of the game you play a different chapter or whatnot you can use different fighters but for this case we just have one of each of the same type of fighter and that's pretty much the step of the game the other thing the other thing you do is you make sure you shuffle your deck here and then you're going to draw out nine cards and that will be your starting hand, which will slowly degenerate to making you draw more and more cards to the point where you have no more cards in your deck. And once you run out of cards, you're simply going to be relying on when you choose to use these and the luck of the die. So make sure you utilize these as best as you possibly can. And that's pretty much it for the setup for Paper Pilots. It's going to take you just straight up down below where we discuss how a round of play works and a little bit about how the maneuverability works and whatnot. They have little charts that explain in what directions you're going to be turning and how it affects your defense and whatnot and then we'll come up and discuss the game a little bit and we'll see if i can get grant to join us okay so we've already set up the game for two players in paper pilots and it's pretty much ready to go you got your health your defense your attack and i've had each player draw their nine cards with their cooldowns on their special abilities as well as their deck set to the side you can set them in any way you want just make sure that when you start this is the engagement it begins at and there's multiple different types of engagements based on a chart that you can look up but the chart's gonna be like this uh it could be like this it could be like this as well as here 
and uh, here, and I believe also like this. So this is like close-up engagement. So right now you're kind of set aside like this. And when you're in this specific position, you have plus one to your dodge. So just there's certain things on the chart that will tell you how it functions. And I'd like to see actually play a reference card that will give you that. When you're playing the game, it'll make it a little bit easier as far as that goes. But regardless, it starts with the second phase of the game, which is the attack phase. And the way it works is you're gonna be rolling your attack and your defense die and then you're going to position them on your uh, sides of the plane, one on the left for attack and one on the right for defense. And the same will be said for this, attack here and then defense here. And then after that, you're going to apply any modifiers. And in this case, the, you have the like the, the dodge, I should, I should say, not defense. You, you have that plus one, so each of these will have a plus one to it. And then you're going to apply any cards you would like. The cards in the game that you get are actually going to be a lot of text, but most of that text is actually story for the game. The only really uh, important aspect of these cards is going to be found at the top left-hand corner of all of the cards. They're going to be things that will tell you you're going to get additional attack, whether it be a special ability that lets you cancel something, uh, something that lets you do a uh, change in position, dodging, etc., etc. And you'll be able to use these cards if you want to increase your or maybe attack. So in this case, I could play something like that. And that is going to give me a benefit of plus one, oops, when I am attacking, going toward that player's defense. So I'm, I'd be at one ahead. So I'd be a five as opposed to that four. But remember this has a modifier of one. So I need to actually play one more attack if I have one. And now I'm at a six compared to this five because of the specific position the uh, planes are in. And this player can do the same as well. Let's see if he wants to do anything. He's got some dodge here. Um, yeah, he could do this. That would that would protect him, right? And after that, then you're going to determine the outcome of going through the defense and going through the attacks. In this case, since uh, this attack would be blocked by this dodge here, and this one over here would be blocked by this one here as well because of the plus one due to the position of the uh, ships. In this case, all these are just going to be discarded into the player's discard piles. In this case, it'd be over here and over here. And if both miss, you're going to move on to the engagement phase. But before we do that, let's just pretend like this one went through. So let's say that this one was here at four and this one was here at one with a plus one for the specific engagement that they're in, which means that there's two that go through. In this case, the... Uh, this ship is going to apply a hit to this ship and how it works is you're going to roll for damage and based on the damage that you deal you're going to reduce this uh, this ship's defense or this hole by that amount of damage you could also choose to play cards to reduce the armor to increase your damage that will then significantly do more damage to the specific ship's hull and after that you put all those played cards into the discard pile as well and after that you'll go into the engagement phase whether just one player or both players provided a hit if neither did you would just simply go to the engagement phase like they showed you in the first example in the engagement phase you're going to draw cards to your maximum hand size of nine in this case he had seven because he played two so he'll go ahead and draw two cards and this player has eight because he played one so he'll draw one card then you're going to refresh any die that you have and in this case these are die that are going to refresh for your maneuvers so we'll take these off we'll flip these little bad boys over and these ones as well and then you can utilize these abilities and they do different things whether they're going to give you plus two to engaging and plus two to dodge which will then of course put a timer marker on them when you use them and they won't be able to be utilized again until this gets removed or i could do something like canceling the results of a die roll which is, can be very, very useful as well, but it has a timer of five. So you have to be very careful when you choose to use that one. But these will always remain in play. They just will be available sometimes and not available at other times. After that, we are done refreshing your die. You're going to go ahead and roll for your engagement. You'll simply roll the die and then you'll determine the difference. And based on the difference, you'll determine, uh, the player who wins will determine how he wants to push through the chart. And the chart will let you go from the left to the right but you can't go from number one position to the far end position because you're always wanting to push to the right because you, you know being in certain positions are going to be better than others. And of course, if, if this is you and you're in this position here, it's more likely you're going to be able to avoid it, but you're not going to be able to do as much damage. This is a really bad position for a specific player to be in because this player is going to get additional attack and this player is probably going to get def uh, less dodge to their specific role. So you have to be very careful how engagement works. And remember, you can also play cards uh, to apply the bonuses to your engagement, as well as, of course, utilizing this ability here, which can let you change your engagement as far as that goes. So utilizing those cards is going to be very beneficial during this phase. 
After you've determined your final roll based on any modifiers you may or may not have, you will apply the points, you'll move the fighters in whatever way you want as the winner, and then you're going to move back into the attack phase of the game, where you're going to be rolling your attack and defense, and trying to produce a hit and do damage to your opponent. If you can reduce an opponent's hull to zero, you're the winner of the game Paper Pilots. Pretty simple as far as that goes. Let's go ahead and talk about the game, and I'll give you a little bit of a review as to what I think about Paper Pilots right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and discuss Paper Pilots. It's a two-player game mm -hmm. that plays in one deck or two decks. And yeah. the difference between it really is just the amount of cards you get in your deck mainly. Yeah, you'll have more uh, maneuvers available to you as well. Yeah, because we mainly played with just a singular deck, but you can play with multiple decks. And I think Grant, Grant was the one who played with the two separate decks with other people. Um, with this one here, it's uh, chapter one. So it actually has a full story in the game as well, which I didn't really cover all that much other than just stating that there is a lot of yeah, text on the I've cards. I've never seen before is they actually put the story on, like the full story on the cards. Like there's flavor text before, but this is a legit story. That you, you can read from start from number one card all the way through. Yep. Which is kind of interesting. How do, you, how do you feel about that? Uh, it is very interesting, but that being said, I would have just rather had like an insert so it can make it easier to read. Yeah, like a full on little like story and then have just flavor text on the cards maybe at yeah. the bottom or something. You get like a gold that. medal for being ingenuitive and not, not change it back. Yeah. You are, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree as well. I'd probably rather see it like it just a fully like. It's not because I hate the story, it's because I'd rather the card game, the gameplay aspects be more. Influential, more. like it's yeah. shown more. Yeah, I, I can see either that, that well. or uh, art. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take away from the game at all. Like no. when you're playing it, you can understand it pretty you well. You don't really need a lot of information off of the cards. And understanding it's like minus one to engagement, plus one to dodge, plus one to attack. Like they're pretty straightforward cards. It just, you, the story takes up a lot of the cards. Uh, the little paper airplanes. They're very cool. Yeah, these are super cute. I thought as well, little origami planes that you're going to be adding. And, and the way the game moves with the engagement, where you're rolling the die, you're utilizing your cards, and you only have a certain amount of the cards. The die, by the way, use. are not included. No, they're not included. Die not included. But the way you roll the die and move the planes around to formulate that engagement is really interesting as well. Like you can push yourself to a certain degree that's mm -hmm. going to benefit you, um, and of course get even closer. But it might be what your opponent wants you to do as well, because they might have more attack, and if you get in too close, you might have this like dog fight that you probably weren't prepared for. And uh, I like that aspect of the game. I also like the aspect of the countdown die. So it gives you something yep. to do as well. It gives, a, it gives a feel of a cooldown, which is like a nice video game crossover. Yep. It's, it's pretty straightforward as to how they work as well. We talked about something a little bit before we started doing this, which is called the um, engagement phase after you cancel the results. Mm -hmm. so there's forced engagement, basically. Uh, it's forced phases. And like Cards like that will uh, force the game into a different phase that it's not supposed to be in normally, and there's extra bonuses for the person who forces the phase, and then there's penalties of certain cards you can and can't play. Typically, like pilot actions, you get uh, limited on, so it, it makes the, it kind of forces the game to return back to normal. But he's a, he's the rule guy; he explains yeah. things a lot better. But nevertheless, uh, the the game's fairly straightforward. There's only two phases, and if you were lim really to limit them down, I think it's just attacking. You roll the die, you apply modifiers, you apply cards, you settle to see if you hit. If you don't hit, you move on to your the engagement phase. If either of you do hit, or both of you, then you're gonna roll die and apply more cards to do the damage. And yep. then you'll move on to the engagement phase where you'll roll die, roll, add cards, apply modifiers, and determine if you can, if whoever wins, and determine how you want to position your ship. Possibly, if you can, obviously, you want to be in the best possible engagement. And then when to use your specific static abilities. Which is when you have the big members. swings. When someone rolls a six and you roll a one, you just cancel And it. that has a lot of luck involved, right? Well, That's that actually just... helps mitigate the really awful luck, so you'll end up with a more favorable, like, a uh, three to four. And, you know, being down by one die isn't as bad as, you know, they only shift one position on you, as opposed to putting you in a terrible position, or, you know, just... Oh, I there's no way I'm going to spend eight cards to put my defense, you know, all the way up so I can block you. I'll just cancel the whole result of this combat. Would you recommend one box or two boxes for two players? Uh, it just depends on how long you want the game to go. I think that's the the, the factor. I think it'd also be interesting to, to see if you could play with more than two players as well. Hmm. Because you just have, you know, you both use both the decks and then you have, like, a formation like this. And then just have a bigger chart that kind of changes how things work. 
I don't know how that would complex it too much, but I think it would. I always wonder if like you can add these two player games and make them more players. I guess I'm more of a, a multiplayer guy, but uh, I've been playing a lot more two player games, so I've been like slowly enjoying two player games a lot more, mm -hmm. just because when you're forced to play them a lot more, you're going, hey, okay, I can see why this seems why people like these two player competitive games. Um, what are your thoughts on the game in general? Quality, etc., etc. Artwork. Ah, uh, it's very unique. But I think the theme's pretty good. And comes through. Uh, what else is there? Our, our artwork. Yeah, yeah, the artwork is good. Um, I, I mean, I like to see more. I'd always like to see more, especially sci-fi settings. Yeah, this does a, this does a good job of giving us that little like retro space fighter asteroids kind of feel. Yeah. And I've obviously when we talk about the cards, we, we'd like to see more artwork with it, but we do I do like the background. I do like the backdrop and how it feels. It's like really weird retro we kind of space feel where your your ship's kind of moving and jiving and dodging. It's it's cute. It's really it's really cute. I really enjoy that aspect. And I, I do like the little, little planes as well. I think that's a really unique touch to the game. Mm -hmm. Being called paper pilots and all. Uh the die uh, aspect of the game obviously you got to make sure for me positioning the attack and defense and realizing the attack goes to defense and defense goes to attack it didn't like that was super intuitive for me like i got it like instantly but he was having a hard time yeah maybe i'm i don't know i goof on the occasion but uh, overall, I, I enjoyed this game. It's a cute little two-player competitive game that you can obviously see more being added to it. I can definitely yeah. see that there's more cards that can be added to the game. There's new different types of fighters that you can play with and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I know the Kickstarter's right... There's, it's going to be up like right, like three, two or three days from now? Something like that. So mm -hmm. it'll be pretty dang close. And I'll be interested to see what, what, what it looks like and what they're intending on doing. If they're just starting off with the tech deck zero or if they'll be adding more chapters or or what's going to go on with yeah. it. But uh, yeah, so Paper Pilots, uh, your overall impression of the game? Uh, it's a very unique game, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I like the m maneuvers and phases and whatnot, but you have to be prepared for the... The luck involved in the game as to how you roll the die, as, as to rolling die. And with this game, there's specifically a lot of die rolling, yeah. and so you have to make sure to be you're, to choose your battles carefully when you want to mitigate and when you want to just allow Go yourself to to take the damage and whatnot. And there's obviously some secret unique cards in the deck too that will give you some kind of unique bonus. And mm. so there's like three three of them or so. That they're, they're one of like I didn't count. They do some interesting things as well, which I won't. I'll, I'll leave as a surprise for you. But anyway, if you're interested in taking a look at Paper Pilots, check it out down below. I'll have a link down there for Kickstarter for you. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, and do the outro. All right. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you're interested in taking a look at the game Paper Pilots, it'll be on Kickstarter in the description below where you can go ahead and pick up a copy for yourself to play a two-player co competitive dogfighting space combat game. And also, if you're interested, you can check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. Don't forget to also enter into our giveaway, which I believe is ending, but it's the Return to the Dark Tower game. You can go ahead and pick that one up, hopefully from us. If you win, which will be done definitely the next day or so, maybe maybe three day, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, it's ending shortly, but we'll have something else up there for you as well. And please, don't forget to check out our friends here on the side. I'll just pick them at random since we have so many people I like to have share out, so you can get, check out their content as well. They do a lot of great stuff and things that I don't do that I think you'd probably get an enjoyment out of, uh, as opposed to maybe my sad, sad excuse for a review channel. But regardless, I do thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to flying some paper pilots with you next time. Whee!